Dr. Brioli, thank you for agreeing to be interviewed by eCancer in you. Stockholm. Um, you've presented two papers on the use of uh, lenalidomide in the treatment of patients with newly diagnosed uh, multiple myeloma. Yes. Can you describe um, both of these? First of all, I think um, there was a com combination with cyclophosphamide and mm -hmm. dexamethasone. Yes, both uh, the papers are actually from uh, uh, the same study, looking at two different aspects of uh, treatment with uh, the combination of cyclophosphamide, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone. Um, the first one is an analysis of the toxicity of this combination in newly diagnosed myeloma patients, both young and uh, old, less fit patients. And the other one was um, an analysis of the rate of second primary malignancies in newly diagnosed patients who have been treated with lenalidomide uh, as an induction and uh, as a maintenance therapy. And can you tell so me what the main findings were then of these, these studies? Yes. Um, we found out that the combination of cyclophosphamide, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone is really well tolerated in both young patients and especially, which is most important, in old and less fit patients with uh, not an increase of toxicity and it was easy to deliver to um, most of the patients. And we also uh, looked again, as I said, as the incidence of uh, second uh, primary malignancy and we didn't find, even if we still have a short follow-up, so of course this data will need to be confirmed with um, a longer follow-up, we didn't find an increased risk of developing another, a second malignancy if treated with an immunomodulatory drug. But again, as I said, uh, this is a preliminary data and the follow-up is really short at the moment. So is it too early, do you think, to talk in terms of these data uh, as far as um, mm. uh, uh, clinical practice is concerned? And regarding the combination of cyclophosphamide, lenalidomide and dexamethasone in newly diagnosed patients, no, I don't think it's too early because uh, we have been analyzed the toxicity and it was uh, easy to deliver in patients and it's really, uh, really feasible, so it can already be used. Uh, in practice. Regarding the uh, potential risk um, of um, developing of side effects or uh, long-term side effects of this therapy, it might still be a little bit too early but the data so far are really, really reassuring so um, no I think they can already be used in Good. practice. <laughs> Um, so are we any closer then to finding the optimal strategy to use uh, in these patients? <laughs> That's a difficult question. Yeah. Uh, hopefully yes, there are a lot of, lot of different drugs, a lot of different combinations that can be used. Uh, we still need to work on how to best rationalize and to deliver the perfect treatment to every single patient, but I think we're getting closer to it. It will still take time though. And what developments do you hope to see then over the next 12 months or so that might get us <laughs> further forward? Mm, I would hope to see, well, some results of also the earlier clinical trials, so with the, what's with even newer drugs, uh, which are those results, and then maybe start bringing those drugs from the refractory relaps relapsed setting to the newly diagnosed setting. So you're quite optimistic then about the future? Yes, but I think it's going to be longer than 12 months <laughs> in the future. Of course. Dr. Brioli, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.